Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wonderful World English. My name is Dave, and in this lesson, we are going to learn how to speak British English confidently. I'm from England in the UK. I speak British English, and I know that many of you are very interested in learning British English. So today, I want to just help you better understand it, learn how you can use it, and we'll look at some different things about, about British culture and just greetings and things you can say if you are traveling, studying, or are just interested in the UK and British culture. So let's jump in. What will we learn? We will learn basic British English greetings. So just basic things you can say to people you meet when you are in the UK. British phrases, things that British people say often and what they mean. Common British vocabulary, just things that in the UK many people say, but if you go to other countries, maybe they don't say it as much, but it's good to know these things. And if you can know them, British people will find that very impressive. Pronunciation tips. I will teach you how you can say words with a British accent, if that's what you want, and also, also offer some cultural insights, just some insights into the British culture and how things are in the UK. So let's jump in then. Greetings. When you meet someone, how can you greet them in English in the UK? Well, you can say hello or hi. These are standard everywhere. People know this. A little boring, but everyone understands. So it's a safe thing to say. But if you want to be a little bit more interesting or polite, I would say, you could say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is a nice thing. If you are walking outside, you see someone, you can say hello, or you can say good morning, and they will say good morning. And it's a, just a polite, friendly way to say hello. You can also ask, how are you? How's it going? You all right? How are you getting on? This, you can say it's less formal, Maybe this you would say to someone you already know, like a friend or a family member. And you can, I won't say to my brother, hello. I will say, how's it going? How are you getting on? Note, there's no R. How are you getting on? You can just say, how are you getting on? It's a less formal way to ask, how are you? It's also a popular greeting. How are you doing? How, how's it going? You all right? This is very common in the UK. All right? People will just walk. They'll be going to the shop. You'll see your neighbor. All right? And you don't need to say anything back other than all right. Okay, so it's a way to say hello. How are you? I acknowledge you are there. And a way to say thank you is cheers. People in England and the UK, they thank you, of course, you can say. But you can also say cheers, cheers, ta. This is more of an English one, ta. Thank you, ta. Or nice one, nice one. That's also a way to say thank you, cheers, ta, nice one. So these are good to know. I do recommend, if you haven't already, a notebook and a pen to write these down. This can help you remember, practice, review, and just... Yeah, in the future, you can use your notes to remember this much more effectively. So next one, let's look at British phrases. First one, fancy a cuppa. What it means is, would you like a cup of tea? Fancy a cuppa. If someone is round your home, you can say fancy a cuppa and they will be yeah or I'm OK. Next one, I'm knackered. This is very British. I'm knackered just means I'm very tired. I'm knackered. 
it's a bit nippy just means it's a bit cold. If the weather is cold, temperature is cold, you say, cool, it's nippy outside, it's cold. I'm chuffed to bits or I'm chuffed. Just means I'm very happy, I'm very pleased. If something good has happened to you, you can say, I'm chuffed. Skint. This means having no money. If some, if you invite your friend, hey, want to come for some drinks? Ah, oh, I'm sorry, I'm skint. I can't come tonight. Skint. Broke or having no money. Blimey. This is an expression of surprise or shock. So it's like, whoa, blimey. What just happened? That was crazy. Blimey. Brolly. This is many English people will say, instead of, ah, oh, where's my umbrella? Where's my brolly? Brolly. Next one, gobsmacked. Gobsmacked. This just means astonished or amazed. So like, if you're watching sports and something amazing happens, you can say, whoa, I'm gobsmacked. How did he do that? How did she do that? Gobsmacked. Next one is dodgy. Dodgy's like suspicious, unreliable. If you think something is dodgy, you don't trust it. If you, maybe you go out and you see someone looking weird, looking crazy, you can say, that person looks quite dodgy. Dodgy. This one is quid. In the UK, the currency, the money is the pound, the British pound, pound sterling. But many people don't say 10 pounds. Do you have 10 pounds? Yes, you can say that. But you can also say 10 quid. Have you got 10 quid or five quid or two quid? It's just a slang way of saying pound. And also taking the mickey is making fun of someone. If someone's laughing and joking about someone, they are taking the mickey, taking the mick, okay? Making fun of someone. And the last one is nosh. We could say food or a meal. Wow, this is good nosh. This is delicious food, nosh. So I hope you've got some of these, you understand them, you can write them down, try to practice them. I'd love to hear you using them in a sentence. Maybe you can make a video and send it to me. I always like to, and I can give you feedback and support and advice. Um, that's my job as your teacher. So next one, let's look at some vocabulary. We've got here British and American. So I will say the words and what they mean in American English. Maybe if you have learned American English, this will be very useful because you already know the thing. Now you know the British way to say it. I will say that we understand each other. Like if you don't know the British words and you use the American words in the UK, People will know what you're saying. It, it, they will understand. So don't worry. But if you want to say it like a British person, here you go. So British English, a flat is an apartment. You live in it. It's a flat. Lorry is a truck. Lorries are on the road. Biscuit is a cookie. Biscuit. Lift is an elevator. What floor does the lift go to? Q is a line. When you're waiting to buy something, you are in a queue. Rubbish is trash. Rubbish. So like put the rubbish in the bin. Put the trash in the trash can. Rubbish, trash. Holiday is vacation. We say, when are you going on holiday? In America, you might say, when are you going on vacation? UK holiday. Nappy is diaper. This is what babies wear. Nappies are diapers. Crisps are chips. So potato chips in American, in English, UK, we call them crisps. British up here, petrol is gasoline. We say, I need to fill the car with petrol. That's gasoline. Trousers are pants. 
you wear your trousers in the US, they will say pants. Car park is parking lot. This is where you park your car in a car park. Boot, trunk of a car. So we don't call it the trunk, we call it the boot. It's the back of the car where you can put things in, the boot. Bonnet, this is the front of the car where the engine is. Bonnet, in American English, is a hood. British, tap. American, faucet. But in British English, we say tap, turn on the tap. British, sweets. Oh, these sweets are so yummy. In American, candy. Sweets, candy. But we understand candy, but we just say sweets. British, chips. Fish and chips. We love chips. Delicious. American English, they say fries. Fries. And British, we say jumper. Put on your jumper. In American, put on your sweater. Okay? I will put these in the school community. You can download this there if this helps you remember. I will also include many more for you to learn, revise, practice. That's a great place to download it and learn different vocabulary and what they mean in British English and American English. Now, let's look at some pronunciation tips. Here, the R sound often often softer or silent. So car, you can hear, I'm not saying car, like American, you would emphasize the R, I'm saying car, okay? Car, or like um, far. I'm not going far, far, no. The R is kind of silent, it's more of a H sound. So car, far, bar. Okay, tar. So it's R, British English accent R. Okay, if you would like a lesson with me to help you improve your pronunciation, that would be a great way for me to listen to you and give you advice and feedback. But for now, you can listen to me, and I hope this is easy for you to understand. R sound is soft or silent, not like American English, car. No, it's car. Okay, next one. The T sound is often pronounced clearly. Like Americans would say butter, but English we say butter, butter. Okay, butter, butter. My American accent may be not too good, but my British accent is very good and it's butter, butter. We emphasize and pronounce the T's, butter, okay? The U sound often sounds like you. So example, student sounds like student, okay? With proper British accent, we're not going student. We're saying student, student, okay? I can give you some more examples of these in the PDF to make it easier for you, but I'm just giving you a quick introduction to these pronunciation tips. And the A sound is often pronounced as R, like bath, okay? We don't go, some in Northern England, people will say bath, but with a proper British English accent, we say bath, okay? Fast, uh, like hard, okay? Maybe as an example, not like hard or bath. No, that's American English. Ours is more like R, okay? So here are those examples. If you can start using your, saying these, pronouncing your words like this with R, for, or softer, soft or silent R's for R sounds, pronouncing your T's clearly, and saying you for you in words, and pronouncing A as R, you will start to sound more British. Wonderful. So let's have a look now at some cultural insights. Now, in British culture, tea time traditionally is a very important part. People 
maybe not so popular today, but still in English villages and places where still many English people live and enjoy the culture, tea time is important. Afternoon tea with tea and cakes, okay? Politeness. British are known for their politeness and manners. It's very important in the UK to be polite. It's nice to, to say please, thank you, sorry, excuse me. These are really important. If you don't do these things, people will think you are rude. Humour. British humour often includes irony and understatement. So British people have a good sense of humour. They like to have fun and laugh. And usually a joke would be like a serious situation and just making it not seem too serious by making a joke. That's quite normal in British humour. Small talk. If you're meeting someone, uh, maybe you're in the lift. Maybe you're outside in the queue. You can talk about the weather, travel and daily life. Oh, bloody terrible weather today. It's too hot. So many things. British people love to talk about the weather. It's just something to talk about. Small talk. Nothing too serious. Of course, you can talk about travel. Are you going on holiday soon? And also daily life. What, are you, what have you been up to? How's work? Things like that. Pubs. Pubs. Also, public houses are central to British social life. They often serve as community gathering places. So in many towns, many villages and parts of cities, people love to go to the pub. They can meet their friends. They can even meet strangers. And it's a place to just relax, maybe play some games like pool or darts. You can drink some alcohol or just go there for a tea or coffee. And it's just a nice place to just relax and socialize you can watch sports pubs are very much a big part of british history you go to the uk you will see pubs that are hundreds of years old older than the usa as a country you know it's like a lot of history there and it's so interesting to see many pubs as well will have pictures on the wall of that town or the village or even the pub itself from like a hundred years ago. There'll be like old photographs from decades ago. And it's just really interesting to see what life was like, how things have changed, but also how we still love to go to a pub. Next one is queuing. I covered this. The word queue is to line up. British are known for their orderly queues and respect for waiting in line. If you're waiting, don't push in the queue, wait your turn. If you start jumping the queue, people will be very angry. So just wait in the queue, respectfully, quietly, wait for your turn. Bank holidays. Public holidays in the UK are called bank holidays. Many businesses close on these days. Yeah, so like these are just like some days in the year where banks are closed, schools are closed, and it's just like a small holiday where people can just stay home spend some time with the family, maybe even travel. If it's like a bank holiday Monday, then they will have a three-day weekend. They can go to the seaside. They can go on a little adventure somewhere. And of course, fish and chips, it's so popular, especially in seaside towns where I'm from. Fish and chips, a big part of the culture. People love fish and chips. They're not too expensive if you get them from a market store. And they are very delicious, if I do say so myself. Sport. Britain loves sport. Of course, many sports come from the UK. Rugby, golf, football, tennis. There's so many sports that come from the UK and people love it. Especially football. Never call it soccer. It's not soccer. It's football. If you go to the UK and you start calling it soccer, did you see the soccer game? They will be, they might not tell you, but they'll be annoyed about that. Call it football. That's its name. That's what it is. And the weather with 
again, I said, small talk, you can talk about the weather, but there's nothing better than a sunny day in the UK. When the weather's good, blue skies, sun's out, the birds are chirping, it's wonderful, everyone feels good, they want to have a barbecue, they want to get together and have some fun. Maybe go to the pub and drink some beer in the beer garden. That is a wonderful day in the UK. So these are just some of the cultural insights. There's so much more I could teach you about the history, the culture, but of course I can't do everything in this lesson. We can look at some pictures here, and this one is a pub, just a standard pub. You can find these in the UK, across Europe, but pubs are very popular, and yeah, it's a place to meet with friends, just have some fun. Next one, afternoon tea. It's not for everyone. Like I don't, I don't have afternoon tea really, but I know people that do, and it's just a nice thing to do with friends or family. This one is manners. The man is opening the door for the girl. It's polite. It's a good thing in British culture, and she should say thank you for this. And then he would say, you're welcome. Down here, fish and chips, great example. Don't need the lemons, just good old fashioned fish and chips, salt and vinegar, Mwah, delicious. Of here, football, just a standard football game. People love to support their local teams, travel around the country, watch their team, cheer them on and hope they win. And here we can see it's a nice day. This is like a standard house in the UK made of bricks, quite different to the style of other countries. And yeah, it's just a nice day. We've got some flowers. British people love this kind of thing. Good. So now we're going to do a little game. I'm going to give you a moment. You can, in fact, we'll go along. If we were doing this lesson one face-to-face, -face, then we could do this more interactive. But because I'm recording it, you can just Go along with me. So let's match the words. Vacation. What is the word for vacation in British English? I'll give you a moment. And then I'm going to show you. Three, two, one. It's holiday. I hope you got that, guys. Vacation is holiday. Truck. What's a truck? Three, two, one lorry a truck is a lorry cookie how do we say cookie three two one biscuit well done if you got these right next one pants what are pants in british english three two one trousers pants are trousers and trousers are pants. In fact, in British English, pants means underwear, underwear. So we don't say, if you say wear your pants, it means put on your underwear. Fries, what are fries? What do we think? Three, two, one, chips. Of course, fries are chips and chips are delicious. Sweater. What's a sweater? Three, two, one. It's a jumper. You put on your jumper when the weather is a little nippy. Trash is... What is it? Rubbish. And of course, elevator is lift. So well done, guys. If you got those, great job. I hope this helps you better understand and remember. Now... Here's an activity I want to do. We can practice together. Here is a lady ordering some tea. She is on this side and the man who's serving the tea on this side, she says, good morning. Could I have a cup of tea, please? He says, certainly. Would you like milk and sugar with that? Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Cheers, darling. Okay, it's just like a standard British conversation. 
So I will be the man and you can be the woman. You say the sentence. Good morning. Could I have a cup of tea, please? I will read. You read. And I will read. And I can point at you when it's your turn. OK, so when you're ready, in three seconds, you read this. Three, two, one. Certainly. Would you like milk and sugar with that? Cheers, darling. Wonderful. OK, and we can do more examples of these role plays. It's great in a class with more people. We can do it together. It's a bit of fun and it's a great way to practice just conversation, improve your confidence and all of the rest. So thank you, everyone. That's the end of this lesson. I will leave it there. Uh, this is like a quick overview of British English. I hope it was easy for some of you to understand. If you don't understand everything, it's OK. Don't worry. I can help you. Send me a message. This will be in the school community and you can just ask any questions, download the PDF here, and I'm happy to help you better understand British culture, British English, and just, yeah, just improve your English in general. This is part of a British English course. There's already a lesson in there. It's over one hour long, and it goes into, de into detail about British culture, British customs and British traditions. And it's just a bit more insightful into British culture. So thank you, everyone. I'm so happy to have you here. And I wish you a wonderful day. And I'll see you soon. Take care.